So we have a rule on the. Can I just before our rule comes on? If I could just, could if I could just uh, very briefly summarise. So it's quite very interesting, uh, Jonathan's contribution, and I think Jonathan's contribution is something that people should understand and take on. So what he said was that the extra biblical historians that people refer to, you should not refer to them because they're negligible in terms of evidence. For me, for me as a, as a Muslim who's interacted with Christians. The, the, the number of people that I've spoken to who then will point to Josephus, etc., and say, look, we have extra biblical evidence. Hear, hear Jonathan very well. He said it's negligible as, as a form of evidence. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think really we, we, uh, we, we understood Paul wasn't an eyewitness, so therefore couldn't be described as an eyewitness to the condition. And then obviously the, the issue with John, we spoke about the multiple authors, and the fact that uh, the narrative doesn't compare with the other synoptics. And so we have an issue with um, th that as a historical document. Not as a document you take on faith, but it has history. Um, and that was a really, I just wanted to summarize very briefly. Yeah. Although that, I think that I was going to defend it now. If we, um, I'm, I'm a bit conscious of time, but um, so if, I guess if, because um, we've also got Jace, Jason's sort of, Peering in the back chat, coming and going. He's probably having internet problems, but I'll Which bring him on as well. Jason Burns. Burns. Oh, Reverend, Jay Burns. Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Jason Burns, it says on his. Uh, on his just so, in the house. We like that. So, so I, I am certainly in good company there with Jonathan. Yeah. With me well, what, what we want to try and do, because I feel like I don't want to veer off topic. So if, we could, if you can sort of state your claim, uh, Arrow, and then we'll try and stick. I'm, I'm going to make it really short. First of all, I haven't said hello to any of you in person before. And so I uh, take this opportunity to say my hello to uh, Hamza. Ajas, who I met, I think I've seen a couple of times in Speaker's Corner, but didn't uh, say hello. But Imran also and Jordan. Hi, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm glad to say hello to you for the first okay. time. Um, what I'm going to say is this. I, I really uh, do not appreciate the format that we have here to deal with a very, very important subject area. Because essentially, even in the last 10 minutes that I've been listening to you, the number of fallacious arguments historically inaccurate arguments that you're making is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Just in 10 minutes, I can count something like five or six major um, uh, fallacious arguments. Or we, just need one. we just need one, mate. I'll just give one example. Just one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ijaz was talking to Sister Mary, who got on, I think, before Jonathan. And Ijaz asked uh, a question. And the question was, the uh, Babylonian Talmud, Sanhedrin tract, two questions, two points. Um, one, the question that Ijaz asked was, so you take the fact of Jesus being referred to in the Talmud as a historical fact, but you don't take the conclusion that Jesus was a sorcerer as a historical mm -hmm. conclusion. Uh, you, you can't get a more fallacious argument in any debate. Let me make what, this. What is the fallacy there? Can you tell me? Exactly. That's where that's where I'm getting so to. What fallacy has he employed? Yeah, the, the fallacy is this. There is a clear distinction between what a basic fact is versus a complex conclusion. The basic fact What is, is the fallacy though? Like I'm sure you're familiar with fallacy. Which is what, which is is the, what I'm getting to. If you please no, 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 like, is it a straw man? Is it a red herring? Is if you, it if you, a, if you if you if you if you, if you, if you please yeah. If you, if you please, if you please, let me finish, and then um, and then you'll get what I'm saying. So there is a difference between a basic fact versus a complex conclusion. Jews, in seeing Jesus being crucified, they're not making any theological conclusion. That's a basic fact. You don't need a Jew to see it. You, it could be any Greek or whoever else. As long as they see someone killed. To testify for it, you don't need you don't need to disagree much as long as they're truthful. That's the only question you need to ask. Okay. Whereas when it comes to the complex conclusion as to whether they were whether whether they consider Jesus to be a sorcerer or not, you see that same conclusion in the Bible. In the Bible, the Pharisees accuse Jesus of being motivated by Beelzebub. The same conclusion, no, not motivated of God, but motivated of an evil spirit. In other words, it's not a non-biblical conclusion. The conclusion is wrong, but it's a complex conclusion. 
the conclusion is different to what Christians would come to purely because of theological stances people take. And so I could disagree entirely with a complex conclusion, yet take the simple attestation of a simple fact to be accurate. There's no problem. Have you seen the whole stream? Uh, no, I, I just, uh, the, the one question right, right. was asked. The oh, one, you seen the, one second. Arrow, arrow, No, you have to have the right premise here. Okay. So Mary brought the Mishnah, yeah? And she spoke about the herald for 40 days saying that Jesus is going to be stoned and, and then th uh, hung on a tree. That was her historical evidence. So the question that needs to be asked, if this is to be accepted as an historical th event, then this Jesus was stoned. Yeah. If this Jesus wasn't stoned, it's either not a historical event or is it referring to Jesus um, who we're referring to? The conclusion is this. If you're going to say because in the Mishnah it says Jesus was cruci uh, was uh, killed, then you have to accept he was stoned. If you don't accept he was stoned, why are you quoting this? Because you don't believe it's true. That's the whole point here. And that's the problem. When you don't hear a full stream, you come in halfway, think you've got a point, And the reality is you don't. Uh, Hamza, I, 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 I can. No, there was no fallacy. I can, I, I can only. What, what was the fallacy? Could I you can only be amazed by the fact of how you are deviating from the particular point that I am trying to make. So, so there are two points made. Uh -huh. Regards to the one minute, one minute, please. Okay. There are two points made in regards to the Sanhedrin tract. Agreed. One of them was the claim of Jesus being stoned. If you only read the Sanhedrin tract carefully, you would have noticed this is the historical error that you're making. Nowhere does it say he was actually stoned. It actually only says he was declared to be stoned. Okay. So let's just pause uh, but, here. But, but, but apart from that, my main point, my main point there was apart from the point about stoning, there was another point made, and that point is if you're going to use the Sanhedrin tract as an evidence at all when you disagree with the conclusion that jesus was a sorcerer how could he even use it was a question was a was a challenge that he just posed and there he just is nodding there so hamza you might want to yeah take the agreement there in that particular point leave aside stoning the question was can you use the tract senate in tract as an evidence when you disagree with the fact of uh, the uh, Jewish rabbis there saying Jesus was a sorcerer and the answer is yes I can because claiming that Jesus was a sorcerer is consistent with New, New Testament in claiming that Jesus was motivated by Beelzebub and is a common it's to idolatry. Right, so it's hold on. I'll go. To idolatry. It is a complex conclusion. He says he was doing sorcery and calling people to idolatry. Was Jesus calling people to idolatry? That's what the Jews thought. That's what the, that's what the Pharisees thought. The Jews thought he was going to idolatry. That's exactly what the Pharisees thought. They, they, they essentially thought that Jesus was leading, misleading people in all sorts of different ways. Now, can I, can I, can I please put it this so, way? So um, one second, I, Darwin, hold on. Uh, I will, yeah. You said I made a fallacy. What is the fallacy that I made? Well, your, your argument was fallacious there. But, but if it's the fallacious, argument, what the is the fallacy that I made? The logical assumption, the logical point, you were, you, you thought... It was logically accurate to say, if you disagree with the complex conclusion of a document, then you might also necessarily disagree with basic facts in the document. So That's so a lot. What, what is the fallacy? Like, what is it? So, okay. I don't no, know. You accused me because the, the way fallacies work is if you say, okay, you've made a fallacious argument, this is the fallacy that you've committed, right? Yes. What you seem to be telling me is you've committed a fallacy, but I don't know what fallacy you committed. But I believe you committed one. So just say it plainly, do you know the name of the fallacy or not? It doesn't matter. We're not talking, is, is, this, is, this, is this a discussion on who knows philosophy better? Or is this a discussion on <laughs> who knows <laughs> Hold on, I if, if you come to me and you say to me, I've done something fallacious, I need yeah. you to explain what was the fallacy employed, right? So clearly, just plainly here, 
You don't seem to know what the fallacy is. You can't explain to me what the form of the fallacy is. Okay, another, another, another remarkably I will, fallacious I will, argument. I will, another remarkably fallacious argument. I let you speak and I didn't interrupt you. You got to give me the time of day to do it as well. Remember, you said I nodded when you were speaking, so I was silent. Surely you can offer me the same courtesy. So, brothers, what we're seeing here is you've committed a fallacy, okay? What is that fallacy? I can't. But I disagree with your conclusion. So if you listen to what Arun said, he said, this is a fact that happened. To the Jew writing in the Mishnah, every writing there is taken to be a fact by, as Richard Bokam argued, the testimony of someone begs to be believed. That's the default. So do you understand, and let's just do this premise by premise because you wanted to use fallacies and logic. The first premise is, did Mary agree that this was a reliable source we can go to? I will, the question is to you. Did Mary Basically, agree? I don't care. What I'm saying is, can I? So can hold, I? On. hold on, Aru. hold on. So in other words, you don't care what Mary said, but you're here to defend her. And when questioned about what I'm she said, you're not Mary. willing to defend her. I'm in your own words, you just don't to care. So just, is it possible then that you have something to speak on the topic then? Because if Mary is irrelevant, that's your statement. But what is your point then? Get to your point. Yeah. So yeah. Let, 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 me, let me just do this. Um, can I please, even before we move on to anything else, make a very sincere suggestion? Uh, I think I think I've seen a few, a couple of you already before, and the suggestion is this: Is any one of you, or maybe two, is open to two debates back to back? No. So two I will you can tell us to debate at any time, but this one second. Can I, can I, can you stream. please give me the courtesy uh, in listening to well, you know, this is my stream and in my stream I, I appreciate it. and that's exactly what I'm saying the format is not suitable can I please can I hold on hold on I'm I just I, I, I feel like uh, go on go on Ijaz and then I'll um and then you've chosen to tell us you don't like the format of the stream, so you're not willing to discuss those points. You want to do it at another time. So what you can do, Arul, is you can reach out to us in the chat or via email, and we would love to, you know, set up a debate. That's not an issue, but you're here obviously for the challenge that we put out. If you're not here for the challenge and you're here to disagree on the format or whatever the case may be, then perhaps you can try another time. So just yeah. nod if you're willing to speak to the requirements of the stream. If not, you know, God willing, we can bring someone else in. But we want to stick to the purpose of the stream. Yeah. If so we got, we got we got Jonathan waiting in the in the back chat, Errol. So I, I think from my understanding, no, give me two minutes. From my understanding, you've come on, you've backed up Mary's point, and then you said to uh, Ijaz he made a thing. But I, I haven't yet. I'm still waiting to sort of hear your main claims. I don't know if you could, you're able to sort of piece that together. Your main, just be interested to know what your main claim is about the historicity of the crucifixion. Okay, so I'm going to make a minor point here, and then going to ask. No, if if you please give me the courtesy. Yeah. So I I assume you all all three, maybe at least two, made this suggestion that the Babylon Talmud says that Jesus was stoned. Let me read to you the excerpt from the Babylonian Talmud. It says... Why do you read from the Babylonian Talmud? What's that? On the, on the Why do you read from this Talmud? I don't understand. Why are you reading from this book? Can I, can I please make a point at all? No, no, no but I, understand, I want to understand the point of your point. What, what are you trying to... What will this... this is, can, I, can I please make a point at all? That's what we're waiting for, I think. So if, if Hamza wouldn't interrupt me, please. If Hamza wouldn't interrupt me, please. It says on the eve of the Passover, Eshu was hanged. For 40 days before the execution took place, a herald went forth and cried, he is going forth to be stoned. So it was declared, they had decided that they were going to stone, but then they eventually ended up hanging him. That's the record that we have. So to claim that Jesus was stoned is an inaccurate statement. Perfect. But well, then, well then, look, if to claim that we didn't say that, did we? The mission was brought up by Mary. Okay. I, I, I wasn't here to defend I Mary. I was here, here. I was here to I'm talk about it to you. So I'm going to explain it to you. The mission I was brought up by Mary. Yeah, she was the one who brought as her historical evidence that the Jews believed this thing happened. Okay. But when you look at the, like you say, the herald went forward for 40 days saying this man has done sorcery and this man is calling people to idolatry and then he'll be stoned to death and hung on the gibbet. Yeah. Now, either that particular statement in the Mishnah is not historical or it's referring to somebody else. Now, from what I've read, it's referring to somebody else. 
another Jesus long time before this particular event. Now you can pull your face, maybe you weren't aware of this. I'm just reading it today. Yeah. And the funny thing was Mary brought it up. So the point right. is, I'll give you his name. I'll give you his name. Listen, Arul, I'll give you his name. So in other words, he won't let me speak. Arul, Google is your friend. Check up All Joshua right. Ben Pandera, who this happened to. So Joshua. I, right. So the this point is, is this. This is a rule, a rule. Before Jordan brought forward as evidence, the, and you're quoting exactly what Mary quoted. I don't know why, because we've already determined it's not historical. So if I could make a suggestion, crucifixion of Jesus and resurrection are extremely fundamental to, Chris, to the Christian belief. Agreed. I'm quite glad that you're picking that point up as a point of discussion. Can I please challenge one or more of you to a debate? <laughs> Back send, to, send an email that's back, like back, I said, that's already been asked back, and answered back to back one on Jesus's crucifixion. And we can discuss the details another, by email. Another, the purpose of this, another, Jordan, if you will, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Arrow, uh, Arrow, Arrow, I'm, I'm not, I'm muting you. I'm not, not, you know, I just, I'm not, can, not can being I just make a point very briefly? Go on, go on. So, I think the point I wanted to make so it's, it's really thank you, Arrow, for I appreciate you coming and, and giving us your thing, but what we what we didn't really see was. You presenting evidence for the crucifixion. What you came really was to talk about the format and how you thought Mary was, you know, made to agree. You know, uh, maybe falsely represented in, in your perspective in terms of using a t an evidence that you 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 sort of tried to use again. Um, so it wasn't really you presenting what we'd like you to do, and you know, you can do this if you want. What is your evidence that you can produce that will confirm that the crucifixion happened as a historical event? Uh, so, so you, 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 you him, refer uh, to the mention. Sorry, if, if sorry. I'm not mistaken, he did say it was a minor evidence, so he does not even consider yeah. it himself to be something major. Absolutely. So, so is that, that's really what would be useful. That would be helpful. Yeah. It, the if, purpose if of you the have, we, absolutely. This is the whole point. Now, in in the in in the Mishnah, I mean, also mentions that after the the trial of the, the Jesus, five of his disciples were also tried. Um, did, did that actually happen in the in the narrative? There's no mention of the herald that went forth uh, in any of the, the four Gospels. And this is quite a telling thing. For 40 days, there is a person preaching that this person is going to be stoned. Let's forget their conclusion, the complex conclusion about who he was and everything. But we find nowhere in the New Testament narratives, in the, in the Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, who people present, you know, even like yourself, I've, I've heard you and speak as, well as, as eyewitness testimonies, of anyone going forth and pronouncing that this man will be killed by stoning um, anywhere at all. Um, and so it doesn't really fit. So it, it doesn't fit with the narrative. So either something is missing from the Gospels, if you're using this as historical evidence, or the, the, there's, the historical evidence doesn't match somehow in another way. So and the, the, the evidence that you're referring to also talks about the trial of five of his disciples and it names them. None of the names are the names of any of the 12 that are mentioned. And I think it's really interesting that you're sticking to this. I think it would be nice for you as a, uh, you know, obviously as a Christian who preaches a lot and you're at Speaker's Corner and you're sort of well known. Why don't you give us from your perspective what you think is the strongest evidence for the historicity? So not a faith based conclusion. I know people can make any conclusion like but for the historical reliability of the fact of Jesus being crucified as you believe. What, what would you what would you give? Forget what Mary said. What would you give as that? So the uh, second point of debate would be Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Errol. Yeah, well, it was um, I know it may look that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, this is a shame. Him, I mean, he completely ignored it and was just waiting to us. Completely. Yeah. But this is I mean this is for me, this is like a massive alarm bell. No, Imran, Arul is not your Timmy, and he doesn't need to jump through your hoops. Simple. Cat.